I will divide my talk today in two parts, as, as the topic was there. One is Islamophobia, and the other is political involvement of Muslims. So, briefly, I'm a kind of a guy who really believes in history. I believe that if you want to understand any issues of any kind at all, you must study history. Because history brings personality to you. It brings who you are, what you stand for, what your posterity was like, and what your future generation will be like. So to understand Islamophobia, I feel that is very important for you to make you aware. I'm sure you all know this, but still I want to talk about it briefly. Of all the Muslim countries that exist today in this world, other than Turkey, every country was a colony of European powers. And because of that rule, for not few years, but hundreds of years, you see a very different kind of social, cultural, and especially educational strata that exist in the Muslim countries today compared to European countries, okay? So you, to understand Islamophobia, you have to look back. What happened to us and what things, events happened. So, you know, in the 50s and the 60s, when the European colonial colonial powers left the Muslim countries, they created a big vacuum there. And that vacuum was sadly, or you can say fortunately, was occupied by all kinds of people. Dictators were the number one people. And the other group that took over as well it, for the sake of education was the uh, Islamic education, what you call madrasa and all that. And that slow change in the Islamic world brought about the change that we are seeing today that most of the countries, Islamic countries, do not have true democracy. And there's a very common saying in America that we practice Islam better in America than in our own native country. It is a very common saying among people and scholars that you'll hear this all the time. So we have to understand history very carefully and, and understand that. Number two, how do we understand Islamophobia as an individual? I am standing here in front of you, not as an specialist, trust me. I consider myself a simple activist who felt the importance of being involved. After 9-11, I had moved to Frederick from Baltimore, and within three, four months, 9-11 happened. And of course, being a physician, I was, uh, you know, a lot of people came to me that, you know, if you have any problems, if anybody gives you problem, let us know. We'll be there. The priest of the church invited us that same evening in his church, and we went there. We talked about it. And that made us feel very good. Of course, as a Muslim, you know very well that our ultimate protector is Allah. But these kind of supports that came up, um, in the Frederick County was very important to us. It gave us a sense of security, uh, a, a sense of being not among strangers or enemies, but among friends and neighbors. And that was the reason, the reason why it happened was because of our character, our standing in the county. So if there was Islamophobia in that part of the uh, county or in that part of the, of the country at that time, we could have been beaten up. There's a total population of Frederick is about 280,000 people. And then about, I think, uh, roughly speaking, we are about 1,100 to 1,200 Muslims living in Frederick. But we have counties like Baltimore, we have counties like Howard County and Baltimore County where a big, huge number of Muslims live there. And soon after that, a very devoted group of Muslims started forming organization. Different organization. It was fine. You can f form hundreds of organizations as long as you're able to work together. And Alhamdulillah, I can say with surety that, yes, we have been able to work together. There has been, without any doubt, 
some you know conflicts and arguments but at the end of the day we have learned our lessons and we are doing that so that formation of different organizations in maryland i think not completely but i would say has helped us in fighting islamophobia after saying that i'll talk about a little bit of uh, the political uh, aspects of islamophobia what politics requires us to do. I'm not going to give you a lecture how and what to do, but I'll give you a, a, a general synopsis, okay? And I take Frederick a, as, a, as a role model kind of a county uh, for these kind of movements because Frederick County, I don't know how many of you know it, is a total Republican county. And um, the city, Frederick City, where there are about the population of about 60,000 uh, residents living in the city. When I went to Frederick County in 2001, it was a completely white Republican county. The mayor used to call our masjid temple. And I told him, it's not a temple for God's sake. We are not even supposed to say the word mosque. It's supposed to be saying the masjid. And slowly and gradually, that has changed. And how did it happen? It happened because we were involved. Because the Muslims of Frederick were in the forefront, proactively working, not with only with politicians, but with every other religious group of people. If you look at the symbol of Frederick City, of Frederick County, the symbol is church fires, you know, those Church are the symbols of the city. So the religion was playing a major part. Frederick is full of churches. I have not seen so many churches in any other county than Frederick County. Maybe I've missed it, but I can tell you with pretty good surety. A lot of churches, meaning a lot of people are religious there. If I have 10 patients in my practice, six to eight of them would go to church regularly. Six to eight. That's 60 to 80 percent. And out of that six to eight, one to two percent were actively involved in churches. And that thing, that involvement, that proactively communicating with the people has changed the aspect of Muslims, uh, in Frederick at least. So I, I, I can tell you with this as well, in Howard County, in, in Baltimore County, I'm talking about county level because I believe Everything starts at the grassroots level. Everything. And it, the, the politicians of today, uh, you know, if you look at them, if you read their history, you know, even Obama, if you take Obama for that, we cannot talk about Trump. Trump is a unique kind of a politician. But if you look at any, uh, one of the greatest examples of Harry S. Truman, who started as, as a simple delegate, and from there he started slowly and gradually, county level, city level, and state level, and then he went to become the president. Most of the politicians start. So I want you to understand that when you want to do something about Islamophobe, it is very important that you start at the grassroots levels. And that's where you have your strength, and that's where you build your relationship and you go forward. So I'll give you a few examples again. Uh, I, I, Noor gave a very good uh, uh, speech about how and what to do and how to be involved and things like that. But I believe in one simple thing, and that is, and I tell this almost everybody, if you want to fight Islamophobe, one of the simplest things that you can do is to write a letter to the editor. If not once a month, every two months, write simple letter. Keep writing it, even if they don't print it, keep writing it. One day they'll come to you and they'll ask you, can you write a column? Just like I am writing, I write a column almost once a month. At the, uh, my last Friday is, is of the month is the column that's printed in News Post, Frederick News Post, that's a local newspaper in Frederick. But of course we have to look at what things we can do at the national level as well. And as I told before, that we can reach there. We have organizations now that are working at the uh, national level, state level. Uh, I'll give you the example of United Metal Muslim Council. Uh, we have been very active in the state level. Uh, when O'Malley was the governor, we almost had his, he had like eight years in, uh, in office. We had seven 
uh, Ramadan uh, parties there. So politically being involved doesn't mean you have to go and give speeches or you have to uh, hold an office or you have to meet the politicians. Political involvement basically can also simply mean you write a letter and make your masjid the focal point of your existence. I'm telling you, a lot of Muslims do not pay attention to their masjid. For us, the masjid should be our cultural, political, social center. If you do not give enough importance to the masjid, I believe, this is my personal opinion, we will not be successful. Because Muslims, I think, are the most diversified group of people in America. They are from all countries of the world. I was, I was, I, I was in a cab in Chicago, and I was started talking to the driver, and I said, hey, where are you from? And he said, I'm from Albania. And I said, my God, I'm, the f I'm meeting in my life the first time an Albanian Muslim I'd never met before, and that you meet in America. So there are all kinds of Muslims from all kinds of different uh, parts of the world. So masjid should always, each of you here who is sitting here, please, when you go back to your community, tell them that masjid has to play the most vital role. Get involved with your masjid. Masjid is not only a place for praying, but for all kinds of social, cultural, and political uh, 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 activities there. Let me go back to Islamophobe. You know, uh, this is how I look at Islamophobe. It, no matter what we do to, to uh, negate uh, Islamophobe, will it go away? I doubt it. If you look at the history of the United States, uh, all kinds of phobia have been, uh, has ex existed in this world, in this country. Uh, from the Chinese rail, railway road workers, uh, Irish people coming here against Catholics, against Jews, and now, again, um, of course, the blacks, and now the Muslims. So if you ask me a question, what can we do to really fight Islam Islamophobe? And a simple app, uh, answer to that question is be proactive in every activity whether you call the politician, whether you write a letter, whether you are in a rally, doesn't matter. Even small things matter tremendously. Trust me, this, this has happened. And, and Frederick County, once again, is, is a prime example of the success because when I had met the politicians, when I went there in the, in the 2001 and 2002 time, they had no idea what Muslims are, literally. They could not even pronounce the words right. Now they know how we fast, how we break our fast, how we pray our Juma prayer, how many people are coming in the Juma. So it was because a lot of us paid a lot of things at, at the masjid level. You know, there has to be a physical being of an institution if you have created it, created something. And your masjid can be that physical being and, and the strength that you can make and grow in the institution is through a physical being of the masjid. So I won't say, uh, I, I'll stop here. I hope you have questions we can answer you. But uh, lastly, individual responsibility. I'll tell you, th this thing about Islamophobe has created many wars. I think, uh, you know, if you take the Crusades, it was a kind of Islamophobe as well. And the first crusade was the only successful crusade that took place. And there was a genocide committed by a group of people against another group of people. I don't think we'll come to that level because of our education and our, our being modern, all of that right now. But you never know. The intern of Jap Japanese during the Second World War is not that uh, far away uh, of a time that we can forget easily. So may Allah help us, and uh, I hope that uh, you will go here. When you go home, you will be motivated to do something. The whole idea here is not to educate you. You are already educated. It's basically to inspire you. And I hope you will have some ideas from this uh, talk that when you go home, you can activate some of your friends who think like you, who have the same insp inspirations as you have, to fight this Islamophobe and be more politically involved, inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum.